So as I was saying, we're going to animate the form shape. We can do just the shape by itself. And then you can see this animation. Okay, click stop. I want to show you another one. I think it looks a little more interesting if this will close. Okay. Plot controls, animate, deformed results. And you can just um, leave it as it is, I believe. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. Um, can do, you can uh, animate that. If you want to put that in some kind of presentation, maybe. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. And some other things that are important, you might want to list your reaction solutions. So did you see that? I just went to general post processing, list results, reaction solutions, and we do all structural force F. Click OK, okay. and then uh, you've got this table printout. Um, this shows the forces at your supports. And this is important if you want to do your verification. Um, make sure that uh, all your forces in the X, Y, and Z directions uh, come to zero and you have uh, equilibrium because it's a static problem. Another thing uh, that's good to know is how to create an element table. This is good if you want to um, you know, show the uh, the actual force and actual stress for this kind of problem. So we'll go to element table, define table, click add, then you put in a name like actual force, scroll down to by sequence number, leave, uh, choose this, which stands for something, I don't know what it stands for. And you'll see it's added there. Add a second one, actual stress, by sequence number, ls1, click OK. And uh, you want to update it. Uh, if you do different iterations, then you're going to want to come back to this window and make sure it's updated. The status might show previous. When you click update, it'll be the current. Uh, iteration. So I've just defined the table, now I can list the element table, click the ones that you're interested in, and here you have it. You've got um, the axial force and the axial stress in each of the elements, and that's why I was saying it's so important to know where your elements are, and I'll show you again if you want um, where the elements are, because this is how the information is outputted to you. And you have the minimum values, in this case, these are in compression, and you have the maximum value where you've got, uh, you know, members in tension. Uh, for this problem, you know, we're worried about buckling, so you would go to, to the member that has the highest uh, compressive force and um, you would need to list the length, and like I showed you earlier, you can go back if you want, perform this calculation and find out whether or not it uh, will buckle. And you've got like a percent error or safety factor, maybe you've got to factor into that. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. Let me show you really quickly again. Uh, this is the animation. If you wanted to plot the elements again, there it is right there, and they're numbered, okay? You can also plot the results from here. You can do deformed shape. So there you have it. That's the end of this uh, tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned, because I'm going to try to put up more tutorials as I learn more. Um, I might you know, have time to do a combustion tutorial in ANSYS and Fluent, and I uh, definitely will be adding more to Ansys Mechanical because I'm learning a lot with that right now. All right, thank you very much. I hope it helped somebody and enjoyed. If you have any questions, just uh, leave a comment below. Thank you.